Hey guys, it's Dane down here at Zim's Guitars. I have a customer showcase video, really cool old guitar to show you guys today. So come on in here, let's take a look at this thing. Johnny's down here oh. today. <laughs> hey man. Jumping the gun a little there. Thanks man. for coming in on, on me and, and showing us good. another cool old guitar. Let's stop. start first off with how cool that case looks. Yes, indeed. I mean, this case kind of speaks for itself. I mean, obviously, whoever had this mystery guitar here uh, was a traveling musician, at least I'd like to think so. Um, and obviously, this guitar has seen its way around a few airports, I presume, in the late 60s, early mm, 70s. Maybe these are all um, just stickers that he got yeah. from Disneyland, too, though. Could be. I mean, who knows? Right. But I'd like to think of it more as a traveling musician's guitar. That's right. So... And here we have it. Uh, this guitar really does not need much of an introduction, but this, what we have here, friends, is a 1966 Rickenbacker uh, 330 12-string in fire glow finish. Um, it doesn't get a whole lot cooler than this in terms of if you're looking for a 12-string electric guitar, look no further. Um, this guitar is pretty much, it checks all the boxes. I mean, So I'm taking yeah. you'd like this guitar. Very much. I was going to hand it down to my kids if COVID hadn't happened just having a few financial things that have to rearrange. But, uh, you know, everybody from The Edge and U2 uses this. Um, obviously, uh, Tom Petty. Um, you know, if you're looking for that just special, clean, jangly sound. So uh, you want to sell this guitar? Is yeah. there a some place that people can get a hold of you? Yeah, I'm going to uh, have it on reverb. I, I do. I, I am right now negotiating with uh, a gentleman uh, up in Minnesota. But if that does not come to fruition, be looking for this on uh, on reverb. Absolutely. Okay. So okay. yeah, it'll be out there. But yeah, it has the original case uh, in, up until about '67, '68. Rickenbacker always shipped with these beautiful gold, um, or sorry, the, the silver Tolex cases. You can tell this one's original. They've re-released them, obviously, in recent years. Yeah. Um, but it's in nice. original condition. I mean, really, if you're looking for a player's guitar, this is it. Um, you know, the front looks pretty darn good. Um, you know, I can't call it mint by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah, don't ever um, call don't, anything mint. Don't ever call mint. anything mint, right? right. But, because it's not even but not That's even so close. cool but, how they put the it, tuners left and right yeah, and up yeah, and that's down. Yeah, something and Rick was always very innovative. Back with, and uh, forth. The string there. They really made good use of the space. They and, did. Um, you can see, you know, a little bit of checking and there on the, on the finish, uh, which is natural. Um, I have taken a black light, um, obviously, as you pan down the neck there, Dane. Uh, you'll see uh, there's some black paint there as you reach the, the body. And I, for the life of me, it, it seems like it may have left the factory that way. I mean, just because there, there's no evidence. We've shined the black light in, on there. There's no evidence of any kind of a break. Um, you know, so obviously whoever did this was a very special luthier and, and knew what they were doing. Um, there was obviously the aftermarket uh, strap that was installed at some point in the past. But, I mean, just look at the 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 flame on that uh, fire glow that, that fire glow finish i mean it's almost orange you know just the, how they did it back in the day it's just perfect i mean it's like mm -hmm. old furniture you just can't you can't replicate that now mm -hmm. you know? um i mean and rick doesn't really you know if you want a, a road worn rick you know this is the only way you can't what year did you say this one was this is a 1966 i believe wow, May, actually. 66. And, and one of the things too i want to show everybody just um real okay, fast is, is, back is, is well before we do that i just want to show you okay. this is where the serial number is right um and on rick's a lot of people you know it's kind of a unique way that they always did it but uh you can go That's on their true. website and uh you can always look up the, the serial number and uh yeah, you can kind of do that. So I've seen some of the stereo ones where there's uh, they have uh, some guitars that are mm -hmm. stereo. Some that are stereo that have the Rico Sound jack. Yeah, when you get into the 360 model at this era, you're gonna have the Rico Sound um, they're going on. But but it just doesn't get a whole lot cooler than this. Um, I do think the the pick guard there there was a part that should have been elevated. So at some point, hmm. um, the pick guard um, is just uh, just the single ply here rather than having the the little up, there's a little so you got your there. regular uh, selector switch yep you've got volume volume tone um, and then you have the treble the, volume mm -hmm. treble tone bass tone yep bass volume that's interesting and yep. what's this one here for I was you're gonna say you know that one um, 
uh, and even George Harrison himself didn't really have much use for this one on his. Maybe it's a blend or something. Yeah, maybe or a something. blender. He typically just used to keep it all the way uh, full, full to the uh, to the right, full, fully up, right. you know, all the and time. And the pickups. Oh yeah, those are obviously vintage uh, toaster pickups. Uh, that um, I, I don't know the uh, the output on them, but I mean, as far as I, it I does know, look like a toaster, doesn't it? it? It does, right? A toaster. That's why they're called toasters. Did Rick and from the top, Rickenbacker make their own pickups, I or are these they like did. the old the, the Armin pickups? Um, no, those, those are Rickenbacker pickups. Nice. That they, that they uh, well, I've never really seen them on any other guitar, uh, and they may be out there, but I'm just not aware. But yeah, they're all, all original. One thing I notice um, about these Rickenbackers is that the width of the neck is very thin. It is, yeah. They're kind of known for that. Um, yeah. Just that, so if you do have larger hands, sometimes they can be a little more tricky to play. Um, What's the scale length on this thing? Oh, God. Let me get a tape measure. Yeah, okay. Hold on a second. Sure. All right, well, I got my Home Depot uh, yardstick out here. But uh, the scale length to me looks like 24 and 3 quarter. And I'm going to say that this nut width is an inch and 5 eighths. All right, with this guitar, we've got controls for the neck pickup. We've got controls for the bridge pickup. We've got a three-way switch to toggle back and forth between the two. But you'll notice with this guitar, it also has a master volume knob. Sometimes they have a blend knob or other knobs in here, parameters for the guitar. This one happens to have a master volume, which is great because you're playing and you have a certain tone set up for a pickup here and a pickup here. You can just roll off your master volume and keep those tones when you come into your next song. We're on the next pickup right now. Tone all the way open and bridge I mean, then neck volume all the way up. some single notey stuff. This is going to be the neck pickup. Thanks, Dane. So anyway, it's been awesome hanging out here today in, in your shop. And, and again, thanks, Brian, for taking a few minutes out to, to uh, play the uh, Rickenbacker 12-string. Uh, uh, obviously, this is a 66 um, Fire Glow uh, finish, uh, kind of player's condition, but still overall very solid, you know. And um, just listening to you play today, you know, a couple of things jumped out at me. Um, one being, obviously, how shiny the fretboard is. And, um, it, you know, as, as we know, we were talking earlier, Back in the in the day, and, and even today, Rickenbacker they really put a lot of um, uh, gloss on the um, on the fretboards, right? So yeah. I, I don't know exactly why they do that. But. It look, does look like nitrocellulose, and I think it's kind of just uh, 
it's just preference. I know that Trogley, another YouTuber, was talking about the Tony Iommi's he bought recently, having a lacquered, uh, mm -hmm. uh, lacquered fretboard. So this, they happen to do this with this rosewood board. Um, thanks for Trogley on that one. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's a nice, uh, you know, example of some craftsmanship from the past, right. kind of a t time capsule, if you will. Absolutely, yeah. And and the other thing too, I mean, listening to the different positions, the different pickup positions, for me. Um, there's really no other Rickenbacker sound. I mean, it just just comes out. It almost comes out of the stereo or the amp. You know, when you're um, when you're playing. But just the bridge pickup for me is just so British Invasion or 1960s. I mean, it really takes you back. Uh, just the bridge pickup alone. I mean, I don't know how you feel about it, but I think even a blended of, of the the neck and the bridge it, it is still not quite as superior as the bridge by itself. Just when you're going for that 12 string tone. Yeah, I think it's especially with a Rick. Nothing quite sign, sounds like a Rick to me. Right. And these are guitars that you buy specifically. Like I want that tone. That's exactly why you buy this thing. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. But thank you again today for, for uh, playing for us. And uh, this hopefully will be for sale here very soon. So. Cool. Thanks, guys. Thank you. like to buy a Zim's guitar t-shirt like this one right here there's going to be a link in that description so check it out t-shirt link